I am your host of Across Generations, Tiffany D. Cross, and this is the only place where you will hear three different perspectives from three distinct generations of Black women, and I'm so thrilled to invite you to this conversation. Hi, everybody. I'm Tiffany Cross, your host of Across Generations, where each week I'm joined by an elder, a younger, and me. And this week, we have quite a show for you. We're talking about sex work. Now, I've got to be honest. I don't know a lot about sex work, but I do know, like most things, Black women have been asymmetrically mistreated in the genre. Sex work can include anything from exotic dancing with benefits, um, high-end clientele, exchanging money for sexual contacts, walking and working street corners, adult video productions, and in recent years, digital sex work. Now, this can be anything from uploading pornographic material on adult film sites to the boom business that is only fans that doesn't even require any contact. Now sex work is quite literally the oldest profession. But black women has been disproportionately criminalized throughout history when often this was the most lucrative option at a time when there really were not a lot of choices here. So the long history in this country of black women using their bodies as independent consenting individuals to make a living is actually the blueprint for platforms like OnlyFans to not only exist exists, but as we see, to thrive. Now, the platform, in turn, has helped to create alternative underground economies for earning a wage, making a living, and sustaining themselves and their families for some of the women who are featured there. Now, in worrying about banks and workers, uh, OnlyFans reminds us of an enduring historical truth, and that is sex work has always been central to capitalism, and Black women have borne the brunt of its most exploitative designs. Today, this is a multi-billion dollar industry. And I am not here to judge it nor to promote it, but I do have strong thoughts on the way that we criminalize women who have entered this line of work and judge women, by the way. And I've often wondered if we decriminalize it, won't that provide more safety for these women and reduce the risk to public health? But here's where I've thought about it the most. This isn't the type of job that comes with a 401k. So if you were a sex worker in the 80s or 90s, what does life look like in your later years? And how has the industry changed throughout the decades? Like if you're a younger person entering the oldest profession, what is it like for you these days? What's your life like? And just to keep it real, has the price of the brick gone up? Do you take credit cards? What's the personal risk to your safety? How do you work during COVID? So let's get into all of that because I'm joined by two experts who would certainly know and they are gorge. So to my left is Cinnamon Love. She's a 50 year old retired porn star and mother of three and grandmother of two. She currently holds the position of executive director of the BIPOC Collective. This is a resource that aims to financially empower and provide support service for BIPOC uh, sex workers through mutual aid and education. She's also a contributing writer of an up and coming book called Body Autonomy, Decolonizing Sex Work and Drug Use and currently working on an archival project that highlights her 30 year career as a sex worker. To my right, Miss Brittany, she is better known as Miss B Nasty. She's a 33 year old retired retired Navy veteran and mother of one who found her way into online sex work. She discovered online sex work after witnessing her child's father seeking it out. Starting uh, as a cam worker, she quickly rose in popularity, earning a substantial monthly income of $30,000 and growing. Her success stemmed from her resemblance to Carrie Hilson, some say, um, which led to confusion between the two. So despite her success in sex work, Brittany has decided to pursue a degree in psychology and her transition back to academia reflects her multifaceted nature and aspirations beyond her current career. And most importantly, it recognizes the humanity of both of these women. They are more than just something for some people to pleasure themselves to. And I'm very happy to have you both here. So thank you thank for you. being here. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to say thank you, Cinnamon, uh, for joining us. And Brittany, I have to say thank you for your service oh, because you, you served in uh, the armed forces. And thank so you. I appreciate that. Um, I don't even know where to begin um, with <laughs> this conversation. I, I'm really excited to have it because um, 
you know, pornographic viewing went up significantly during COVID. And I think this was the first time mm -hmm. it fell on my radar in a way where it was, you know, being written about in the Times. And, you know, there were these think pieces being written about it. And it really did um, make me think in my career as a journalist, I've sat down with, you know, exotic dancers and different people. Um, and I've never really gotten to take a deep dive with sex workers. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to start with you, Cinnamon, because having worked in the 90s, but you know people who were working yeah. in the 80s and the 70s, Yep. Um, what do you think is the most striking difference uh, between when you got into the business and the state of the business now? Oh my gosh. Um, so I'll give you a fun fact first. Um, so I started in 1993. So I have had um, porn that has appeared on VHS tapes, mm -hmm. DVD, Blu-ray, streaming. And, you know, also I worked in a, cam in a, in a peep show booth. Wow. You know, I've worked in strip clubs, after hours clubs. I've, I've literally worked in every single aspect of the sex trades, whether it's, you know, from the begin from the very beginning. And, you know, yes, I, I know people who there were people because I started in 93. There were people I worked with who had started in the late 80s. You know, people like Jeannie Pepper. Um, there were um, F.M. Bradley, J Julian St. Jock, Shawn Michaels, people who were the foundation of the black porn industry at a time when porn wasn't legal, right? Mm. And I think it's really interesting. Like, I want people to remember that porn wasn't even legal and separate from prostitution until 1988. Wow. Mm. Yeah. 1988 was the first... Supreme Court case that made porn legal. And so when you think about like, you know, one of the, the stark um, issues with porn that started from that time when porn was illegal is that there are no residuals, right? right? There are no residuals. So people who were performing in the 80s and, and 90s who set the foundation for the work that Brittany and I do, those people don't get a dime. And mm -hmm. their, the material that they're featured in is still available online. And right? still generating income. It's still generating income yeah. for other people. Yeah. Right? User generated content allows for fans to digitize and upload their favorite VHS tape wow. to any number of tube sites and the performer doesn't get a single dime. The difference t today is that independent creators, adult gig workers, as I like to, to refer to <laughs> mm -hmm. us, um, have the ability to own their content and they're able to earn, you know, like residual income that, you know, themselves as opposed to having to work with a studio system that doesn't give them any money. And, you know, it makes sense. Back in the 70s when it was illegal, people didn't want to get a residual check for a movie that they did when they were 18 and now they're married and have kids and nobody mm. knows that they did porn. Do you know what I'm saying? But now, today, there's the adult industry is still the only industry where the, the uh, entertain in the entertainment industry where the performers do not get any do not have any residual income that comes in so the 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 platforms like OnlyFans um, allow people to own their content to to earn income going into perpetuity and to sell direct to the consumer and cut out the middleman which is the studio system yeah thank you for that because I, yeah. I think a lot of people I think having that context yeah. is really important um, I want to get into your personal story. Uh, and if you don't mind me asking, yeah. I'm curious in your heyday, like on average, how much money were you making? Oh my gosh. Annually, we'll say. Or I you mean, can tell me, it's I, were you I, pay per I gig? Would, I, I would say it, it was all pay per gig. Mm -hmm. It was pay per gig. You could earn anywhere between like, you know, between 300 and 1500 or 2000 per scene. Um, so and, three, 300. Yeah. And it's, yeah, between $300 or like 12 or 1500, sometimes 2000 per scene. And it was designed, it was based on the type of scene you were doing. So and what is considered a scene? A scene is a, um, a, a sex act that's happening from start to finish or like, you okay. know, or from the time someone walks into the room to the, the time that the ejaculation happens. That's what I was going to ask. Is it the right? ejaculation? I was trying to figure out how to frame it. The ejaculation is most important. The not the female one. Not the, the female one. The male ejaculation. But the male ejaculation. So Let's the, say he ejaculates twice. No. That's still, it's still <laughs> one scene. They would be you're, very you're happy. You're lucky if that oh, happens. Okay. okay. You're lucky if that happens. But, 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 but it would still be considered one scene. But it's still considered yes. one scene. Got and it. So, 
Um, so yeah, but if you are doing just an oral only scene, that's one rate that might be a lower rate scene. But if you're doing a scene with multiple partners, or if you're doing a scene that can, has bondage, or if you're doing a scene that has like anal play or something mm -hmm. like that, then it's like you're being paid more money based on the act and the number of people in the scene. Yeah. Okay. And, and also there's a big difference between, or there was a big difference between um, the, there's a, a, there's a racial pay disparity yeah. also yes. i want to get into that yeah they're they're ha, black has, women are paying lower black women are paid lower just like every other industry or is yeah. it is it oh yeah it is black women yeah black women get paid a lot Wait, less no, black well, men get well, paid less black trans people get paid and black okay. queer men get paid less than black women heterosexual but, black men no they don't get paid less. yeah they're, they're heterosexual on, black men also get i thought paid it depends less. on white women that like the heterosexual well, we, we black men that's depend changed. on the white. We've we've paid that. Oh, okay. we, we fixed that in twenty twenty. Good, thank Jesus. We, we fixed that in twenty twenty. During lockdown, we had a big. Um, there was, you know, as the entire world was on fire, the adult industry was also having its Black Lives Matter moment. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. lots, you know, with the 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 way that you know the black sex work Twitter was mm -hmm. in the streets. Yep were online bailing and people out bailing people wow. out from you know people were protesting um and people were engaging in conversations about sex work about racism in porn on twitter porn yep. and like in-person sex work and because of the nature of lockdown the industry was also on pause like everything else and um, there were a lot of people that were having these conversations about like, we're gonna have this closed door meeting, like companies, we're gonna have, you know, two black porn stars talk about racism on IG Live. This company yep. was gonna have a closed door meeting to listen to black people talk about racism. This company did a, you know, a, this media outlet did a town hall. And so like I was able to pull together an intergenerational group of people to an intersectional group of people, both, you know, black and brown to sit and have these conversations about races, about what we wanted. Mm -hmm. Because for me, it's like these conversations that we were having on Twitter during lockdown were not new. Mm -hmm. We have been having conversations about racism and porn for this for 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 for, for longer than yeah. I've been in the business, like yeah. the, you know, back in the seven back in the seventies, Sahara did a, a did a porn film with three white men in, in KKK uniforms, mm. and mm. and and there was a lot of like you know hubbub about what was going on. So these are not new conversations yeah. that were happening, and so to me, I felt like, are we going to you know you know all this going to happen is because we have a captive audience, these conversations are not going to go anywhere. They felt mm. performative. Right. They felt performative. Mm. So I brought people together and was like, what is it? Let's, let's create a list of top down changes yeah. so that we can make sure that while we have their attention, we can give them a list of demands. Yeah. And one of the many things on our list of demands was to end the racist practice of paying white women more money to have sex with black men yep. on camera for the first time, Wow. which was a, that's so if disrespectful. The, it's so it's, it's so dehumanizing. It's, really, and, it, and companies, yes. agents were using. They were saying, "Oh, it's a it's a big her dick first, rate." Yeah, and yes. her first. It's her time first taking a black oh, dick. Wow. A black dick. And yeah. and also, so like, she gets the most. She gets amount the of money. most money. Wow. And, and the excuse is that it's a big dick rate, even though black men. There are black men in the business with average size. Yes, that is a, a and so there, racist stereotype. And there stereotype. are white yeah. men. Yeah. Yep. And there are white men with large penis with right. large penises, and there's no equivalent for black women. Right. Right. So we were able to get that Good. practice. Like like after this happened, all of the agents came together and issued a statement saying that they would stop charging more money for white women to have sex with so black. So that, that, that practice is not That practice now. is done now. Okay. That practice is done I want to get back to money. So you, okay. we'll, we'll revisit what you talked about because yeah. I think that is so, I, I, I winced when you said about the sex scene with the KKK. Yeah. Um, not judging that it's a sex scene, but uh, something in me. Of the, course. The ancestors would have to it's reach out We all turn at, some of, all it's, of us have a, a fetish that we side eye. Yes. Believe you. Yes. It doesn't yeah. matter if you're in active sex work or not. There is a fetish there or something out there you're looking at like, mm, no. I could never. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And and it's but, and it's about like, it's like, who is that for? Like, right. You know, right. And, and even, it doesn't even have to be that. Like we were having this conversation in the green room about mm -hmm. someone who- Doing the you know, sex scene. Uh, men, black men having, doing sex scenes. The with, cop scenes, with, arrest with scenes. With cops, like where, the, where, the, where a white woman is pulling them Floyd. over. George oh, Floyd wow. protests. Yeah, where wow. a white, where a white woman dresses a cop. Wow. Yep. 
So um, yeah. some tacking that because I need yeah. a minute to even process that before yeah. I, my, yeah, yeah, my yeah. head explodes. Yeah. Um, how about approximately when you were working, how many scenes were you doing a week? I wasn't doing a lot. Um, you know, the industry was so different back then. There weren't a lot of companies when I first came into the business. And so I probably did a hundred. I, I did about 150 movies throughout my active career, which was about 12 years. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, but easily, you know, I was also doing other things. I was camming. I started camming in 97. I was what feature camming? dancing, web camming. Okay. Um, I was web camming where, you know, I was feature dancing starting in like 94. I was doing peep show booths in 95. Like I was. So I was on average annually, how much money were you making? Um. I'd rather not answer that question. Really? Is yeah. there no problem? I won't press, yeah. but is there a reason you don't want to answer? Yeah, because of the IRS. Ah, fair enough. Yeah. Okay, yeah. got it. Well, mm -hmm. I asked the question because I wanted to contrast yeah. to Brittany mm -hmm. um, in terms of how much money you're making because you have a big following on OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're comfortable, I, I know we saw in the intro, we said like 30,000 a month. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. is that still accurate? Yeah, Has it, can it gone be up from 600 K to seven figures a yeah. year? Mm -hmm. And how is, I don't even know how that's text. A lot. It's text. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. A lot. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So that money is that you do pay taxes. Yes. Cause that's something a lot of people think, mm -hmm. you know, they say that about strippers a lot. They don't pay taxes. Yes, they do. Yes. Like strippers pay taxes. They don't. It's also a conversation of it being like illegal money. So it's like drug dealers aren't getting taxed. Mm. So why are we? Mm. You're not considering this profession to be actual work. Why are you trying to take money from me? Is it work or is it not? Yeah. Why am I not covered and protected under being discriminated? Yeah. So if I quit sex work today and I try to go become a teacher, that's probably not going to happen. Yeah. Because you can go Google my butthole. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I honestly, respectfully, I wouldn't conflate what you do with drug dealers. You know, I mean, you're not, I, understand. I mean, yeah. just IRS legality well, of it, yeah. the money. You're not like giving people poison. You no, know? no, like, not, not, a, yeah. not in that case, in the sense of how they, the government sees how I earn my money. Got it. I get it your point. not being uh, considered a, a formidable job. Yeah. In that case. I, I take that point. Um, the, the contrast in money, though, I do find striking. What I find more striking is your story mm -hmm. that you were um, a member of our armed forces mm -hmm. in this country and transitioned from that to sex work. Mm -hmm. Ta tell me how that happened. Um, wasn't in the plans, mm -hmm. but uh, yes, I got out the Navy and I was in a relationship that was not the best relationship. And through the course of that relationship, after we had our child, um, there was lots of uh, cheating. And then when he was not going out to physically cheat, he was still disappearing. So there was a need to figure out what that was. Come to find out he was giving money to cam girls and other content creators such as myself. Um, I had no knowledge of this world. So initially I felt like this was continued cheating. Like this is a form of cheating. Um, and I was very upset. But then there was like a click in my mind, like, well, if this is what you like. Why can't I do this? And then there was a shift to if this is what you like, I'm gonna try this. And then it was like, whoa, I kind of like this. Oh, this is freeing. Mm. Oh, these people like what I'm doing. Mm. And I just stuck and this with was it. Camming. Camming in the beginning and making my own videos on my phone. Okay. And so do you engage in sex with other people? I have, yeah. Okay. Is uh in, in porn or it would be considered porn, yes. Okay. Um, can you and, and these are not people you're in a relationship with. This is just uh so there, there's there been a change. So there was a year or two where I was creating with other creators. Um, so other women and a couple men, I would shoot with them. Mm -hmm. um, and then I transferred over into uh, dating and just working with the person that I was seeing. Mm -hmm. And then I stuck with that because it felt more personal, personal and I, way more comfort in you actually liking this person, vice meeting and let's having sex right i you know i hear you tell this story Brittany, and i'm thinking um i'm trying to picture you in that first scene where you've never done anything like this before and there's a camera and someone is there and you know this is the purpose and you know there's going to be an exchange so the what first does that time feel like? it was with my it was with my son's father so it wasn't uncomfortable okay. it was like oh we're already doing these things and the camera comes out is I'm not performing because mm -hmm. I'm not really, we're just into each other right now. Yeah. Now when it 
came to shooting with other people the first time I did it was in 2020. So I started in 2017. My first scene with somebody else who was not myself or my son's father was uh, right before the pandemic started. So March 13th, so literally days before. That camera came out and my coochie went dry. Mm. Like Sahara Desert. Where is the loop? Mm -hmm. Like my body does not work in front of a camera with other people present without there being some prep chemistry or yeah. something else going on. In front, of, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. <laughs> well, it's hard. It sounds like you're saying it's hard. Um, pardon the pun. Yeah, uh, it's it's hard in terms of um, arousal. Yeah, is it hard in terms of? Like I am, am I actually about to do that? Like, do you have butterflies? It's a, Are it's you like, oh my yes. god? Well, yeah, I, I'm gonna be completely transparent. I have the nervous shits. I'm a nervous mm. shitter. So the butterflies okay. turn into shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's start there. Yeah. Uh, second, it's there's a there's an argument in your brain. I want to do this. I had limited sexual experience, anyways. Mm. I only had a couple partners prior to making content. I had like four partners ever mm. in my life, and I was 26 or 27. Um, so I already had limited experience. I've never kissed a girl. Or, mm, that was a lie. I never had been intimate outside of kissing a girl. I never had sex in front of a group of people. I've never done multi a lot of things that you see me do online. I probably never did them in front of anybody else. And that first time, oh, threw me for a loop. Mm. But I was in front of a group of people who were very encouraging. It was like, uh, just get the lube and make it happen. Mm -hmm. And it was still exciting. It's still fun. It was exciting. Yeah, you just have to check in with yourself. Were you sexually attracted to women always? I've always found them attractive. Mm -hmm. I did not know if that was sexual attraction or not until being able to experience it. And would you be in a romantic relationship with a woman? I'm still unsure. I okay. I still find them like I wanted. To, I would love to be in a relationship with a woman. I don't. I don't feel that sexual attraction all the time to all women. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where I lie on the spectrum. Okay. And are you single now? Yes. Okay. Cinnamon, I want to um, come back to you mm -hmm. um, on your first scene because I'm hearing Brittany. Your, your experience is very different because I can <laughs> kind of see that. You know, if it's a partner, you know, you have a relationship with. Yep. Was it like that for you? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not at all. I, I was going through a divorce. I was, mm. I was in school. I was going through a divorce. I had two toddlers. And how old were you? I was 19. OK, you were already married with two kids at 19 going Girl. through a divorce. Yes. Different times. Yes. yes. Different times. Yeah. yeah. People and got married younger. Yeah. 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 And and I, you know, I, I, I got into the business out of necessity. You know, I was working two jobs in the mall. I and I was carrying 13 units and I had these kids. You know, I was literally going from drop the kids at daycare, go to class, pick them up, drop them at the neighbors start doing, you know, go to work. And I still wasn't earning enough money. Mm -hmm. And I answered an ad. Um, I, I was looking in the back of the LA Weekly and where they had all the strip club ads. And I kept seeing these ads for figure models. And figure models is the term that they were using at the uh, time. For I was going to ask, what is yeah. a figure model? Yeah. yeah. I, I thought that because, I, because I'm a hippie, I thought it was going to be like art. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, okay. That's, what I, that's okay. why I was assuming like yeah. you were going to be posing. posing. Like, yeah, maybe semi-nude, nude. That's yeah. what I thought. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. And um, and I, I thought about, like, I did go and try to audition at a strip club. But at the time, um, but it was a, it, I was in L.A. And the club that I went to was topless. I was thinking, I was like, well, you know, maybe... If I, you know, I could maybe I can try to dance. You know, I had a perfect nineteen-year-old body. Is it different from now? The d the dancing. Yeah, I couldn't dance. They wouldn't let me. I, I tried to audition at a topless club, and they wouldn't let me audition because I was under twenty-one. Because if you are in many states, if you if the club has alcohol, they oh. can only oh. dance. Yeah. You, can, you have to be twenty-one. Of drinking and you, age, and you can only dance topless. Wow. Okay. And so, but if you are eighteen and over you can dance in nude clubs because there's no alcohol got it so okay. the, the i wasn't comfortable with the idea of dancing in a fully nude club on a stage in front of a, a room full of strangers um but the i couldn't even audition at a topless club and so i kept looking through the la weekly and and these people would you know i would talk to you know an agent or a director or a photographer um for from these figure modeling ads and I kept turning it down. They would explain to me that it was porn and I kept turning it down. And then finally, 
I had that one good day where I was three months behind on my rent. My son had a hole in his shoe. I wasn't getting no child support because we were doing a split weeks, joint custody split week. And so I I made the, this this one particular director that I, I met. We, we met at the West Side Pavilion in, in um, West L.A., and we he kept calling me kept calling me like every week like you know are you interested are you interested and i finally you know agreed and he paid me at at that time we were you know your first scene you might get paid $2500 which mm-hmm. for me my rent was 775 a month like yeah. do you know what i'm saying and so oh, yeah. to be 3 months you know it's like i that was 3 months rent it for was you three months yeah, rent. Yeah. it was exactly what i was it was exactly what i was behind. i heard the 2500 i'm like that's it but then when you go back and, to that and time when, i'm right, like oh that's 19, 19, 3 months right. 1993 that's that like was a lot yeah, of money. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah. That was Diff- lot. i forget yeah, it's yeah. A, that was a lot of money and and um, that particular director, the internet was still very new. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so the direct, it was just me and the director. Um, and I wasn't someone who was like, I mean, I was very promiscuous, like starting at an early age. Really? And um, and my, my best friend and I, we used to, you know, get there, we'd be in a motel room, her on one bed with her boyfriend and me on one bed with my boyfriend. So I was already having a lot of sex when I was in high school. I grew up in Flint, Michigan. So mm-hmm. when you're in the country, like my grandparents had a farm, ain't shit to do but drink, smoke weed <laughs> and have sex. Yeah. And so, so that's what we were doing. You yeah. know, I was having a lot of sex early on. And then, and also, you know, I left home really early. Like I was kicked out of my house when I was 16 and I was definitely, I was trading sex for food and shelter, Wow. you know, when I was, when I was a minor. And so, um, without, without like no trafficker or anything like that, but just as a form of survival. Mm -hmm. And so by the time I got, you know, I was 19 and I was leaving this marriage and I was, you know, like it wasn't so foreign for me, the idea of having sex with someone wasn't the the thing that was weird to me. The camera was different, right? And but at the, but at the same time, there wasn't a room full of people. There was no cameraman. There yeah. was no light. You know, no grip. It yeah. was it was a single person doing his work. And so, because the internet was really new, he was sending out a catalog with all of the models that he found, and like to his mailing list, and people would request me to, sh- you know, for for scenes. And mm-hmm. so for the first three months I was in the business, I only shot for this one director mm-hmm. until I met this this black guy named Guy De Silva, um, Afro Latino um, performer, who when he met me, he was like, "Who have you shot for?" You have a shot for anybody? Would you like to shoot for more people? And he introduced me to my first agent. He introduced me to other companies, other directors, and then and that was all she wrote. Well, let me t- go back to that first scene though. Like yeah. again, when Brittany was telling her story, I get it because it's a, a partner, you know. Yeah. Um, for you, it wasn't that, and so I'm still cons- I'm looking at this in my mind. This young cinnamon love who's been a survivor and is just trying her best to make it and survive. Mm-hmm. And now you have to go into this. It seems scary to me, you know, like this yeah. grown man I don't know in this camera. I got two kids. I'm trying to get my rent paid, yeah. and this is what I'm about to do. What was going on in your mind and in, in your heart and your nervous system? You know, I had a conversation with my aunt who also lived in LA, and. Um, and I told her what I was thinking about doing. And she was like, you know, she's like, you're, you're super smart. You know, I know that you're struggling. And, you know, if you're going to do it, just be the best. Whatever you do, be the best at it. Yep. And let me know where you're going to be so that if anything happens for, to you, mm-hmm. I know where you were, where you are. And so she became my co-conspirator because I, every time I would go to a shoot, <laughs> yeah. I would give her the name, the address, a phone number yeah. so that somebody knew where I was. Did you feel safe? I felt safe. Yeah. And, and Apple phones make it so much easier right, now. We you still can do that. that. We right. still do Share location. Share location. Send the ID over. Send phones. the paperwork over. Yeah. We, yeah. Send, and you have a, a safety right in your yeah, pocket. In your you pocket. did not have that. I didn't but her that. texting like the name and information as soon as I get to if I am shooting with a person immediately I send two people their ID that I take the picture for and yeah. all the documentation so and they, they have, have my location so you know exactly where, where I am where who I am. I'm with yeah. their real name not their performer name yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's it has that hasn't changed yeah. that wow. hasn't changed but it's but that for me was that for me made, helped me to feel very safe mm-hmm. you know and I was uh, in the beginning 
I wasn't working that much. Mm -hmm. I was still working a regular job. Mm -hmm. I was working, literally, I was working at Gap Kids and Natural Wonders. Wow. I was selling in your records and false, and like fake saber tooth tiger skulls. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. It's like, but, but the, you know, it's, it was a, you know, the money, I, I wasn't, trying i didn't know what porn was mm -hmm. like i hadn't i didn't really have any experience with porn i remember like you know seeing my brother trying to unscramble the cable box yes that was we my were, experience when, with when porn. i was a kid but the, I we never, used to watch cinemax late at night yes and yeah. it was squiggly lines and we were trying to make preview. out an image yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Eman emmanuel like we, I, we, yeah. I would get in so much trouble had i <laughs> paid for it but just in your young mind you're curious about bodies what and, sex, they and it's like what yeah. is this image and every now yeah. and then you could make out like a nipple mm -hmm, you know or mm -hmm. something it's like oh yeah a big deal so i didn't have any real experience with porn you know like i didn't have a a but, frame of reference yeah. yeah of what i was getting myself I get that. into unlike me yeah i you had knew. all the references you, yeah. you, you <laughs> i had nice paper open. references digital references mm -hmm. dvds vhs's yeah, yeah. All you you went top. in in a different um yeah. perspective and i i shared that those sentiments to say i was not that much younger than you when i'm looking at squiggly lines yeah. and you are actually shooting a scene yeah. and you you have intellectualized it you're talking about it but i hear it and i'm thinking if you had another option, yeah. you would have chosen that. You, I don't yeah. know. You, I was in the Navy and I Right, you yeah. made a choice, a decision yep. to do this. And I'm also struck that your your life sounds tumultuous. There was not stability for right. you. No, it, it, um, and I think a lot of people assume, you know, if you're an, um, a, a sex worker or in the adult film industry, um, you are the victim of some sort of abuse or, yes. or instability. It, I get and, that and, comment and, all the time. And like, is that the I case must, for you? I must, I must be down bad because I mm. left the Navy Navy to do porn. Yeah. No, I'm medically retired from the Navy. I'm good. They send me a check every month. Yeah. And, but there was never this is any abuse choice. in mm -hmm. your. I mean, self. there was abuse, but the abuse kept me from sex. The reason why I had no sexual experience is because my sexual experience started too early. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want it to be with anybody unless I was in love or I chose them. Yeah. And so that was a gap that I had to overcome after I had my son. And that's what made it a little easier for me to transition into what I saw my baby daddy looking at mm -hmm. because I already rectified that within myself. Mm -hmm. Were mm -hmm. you a child during the abuse? Yes, I'm a child sex as well. Yeah, a sex. child mm -hmm. sex abuse survivor. Yes. Yeah, I, I like to remind people because people often have that misconception and yeah. like that, mm -hmm. that you're in the business because you are a survivor of some sort of like, you know, either childhood sexual abuse or other types of trauma. And they always think that you're just hyper sexualized. There's no other, There's no other options. Right. But we're saying and, this and both of you guys though did survive. You had but, trauma and you had sex abuse. But like she but, said, but she was out is, there having sex. I wasn't. was not. But you, but, that, <laughs> but, but that says a different I, coping skills. I, but, I, yeah, but, but you but both also, were Also, survivors. I like to remind people that when you look at the statistics, right, just black women alone, one in four girls, black girls, will report experiencing sexual, uh, sex, you know, childhood sexual assault before the age of 18, mm -hmm. right? But one in four black women are not going into porn. Right. One in That's four black point. women yeah. are not are not becoming sex yeah. workers. Yeah. So it's like the the fact that there are people who have experienced trauma in the industry yeah. is, is is a reflection of society at large yeah. and not because we're just drawn to the work. And it right. reminds me of the conversation with every time that, uh, you know, rest in peace to anyone who has, when they harm themselves and they commit yeah. suicide, all of a sudden the conversation comes up, oh, it's because they did porn. Right. Oh. Like there's not, it's not veterans of, killing themselves every day. Right. Like doctors aren't killing them. You know, there's mm -hmm. wild right. groups like, yeah. And they just reduce us to, oh, because the porn. It's because mm. of the porn. That's why you kid yourself. Well, so let me ask. You all seem joyful to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I walked in the green room and talked to you. You both seem so pleasant. I don't, you know, depression doesn't show up in the way that we right. think. But let me ask, like, do you have any emotional trauma from the work you're doing? You know, do you oh. feel like, oh, I'm just so upset about this? Or, mm -hmm. or, or is it like, no, I'm, I'm good. I am grateful to say that from the work, I do not have any... Uh, trauma with this sex work mm -hmm. no I do not and mm -hmm. I'm very grateful for that I think that if that ever happens and I do not want it to mm -hmm. um, that would change my whole perspective again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I will go back into that original coping mechanism of no sex right. really I do believe you that. could see that yeah this is this that is the one thing that will stop me from doing this altogether is that being taken advantage of again <laughs> Yeah. Can you, can I, you? I, I would love to answer, uh, yes, to respond to that. I, I have had 
most of my experiences have been positive in the, in the industry. I have had some experiences since I've been in the business that were negative experiences, either whether it was sexual assault or other types of domestic violence, other things like that, that don't necess didn't necessarily have anything to do with the work, but it was, but it was things that happened while I was in the business. Mm -hmm. And being in the industry made me more susceptible or vulnerable to the, the types of trauma that I experienced. Mm -hmm. But I definitely also, I have mostly really, really good things to say about the work. The most, the most negative things I have to say have been caused by the stigma mm. that yep. has been placed upon me and the way that I've been treated by other people mm. because of the work. Mm -hmm. And then our, our experiences are very different. She went into actual porn, whereas I did start with my baby daddy, but when I left him, I was solo for years. So mm -hmm. it's me and toys. Mm -hmm. I was eliminating, even though I don't think you can completely eliminate experiencing sexual assault, there's no way to prevent it. But that was a way for me to, I felt like to eliminate my chance of experiencing it was to keep to myself. Mm -hmm. And in that turn, it focused on me learning how to pleasure myself Set and boundaries. learning to love the camera as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not uncomfortable in front of the camera with myself. Mm -hmm. Like there's no shame. You can never shame me for that. Mm -hmm. and, now, and when we get in front of with other people, that's a different ball game. You, do you feel shame then? I don't feel shame, but it's a different ball game. Like there is more conversation in your head because you're used to setting up a light and turning the camera on. And if I understand if you haven't seen my content, but in my content, I'm talking to them. Mm -hmm. So like if the camera starts to tilt up, oh, oh, the camera shifted a little bit. Oh, well, like I'm talking to them you're casual. The it's very wall. casual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did my first professional scene last year, nothing casual about that. No. Nothing. We simulated the sex to take the pictures before we even had sex. Yeah. Mm. And that was so weird to me. Yeah. The experience was great. Yeah. Overall so experience was great. Experience. Yes. The overall well, experience was great. But would I do it again? No, and more money, please. Well, and it's, and it's me... ironic because like I have been mostly a solo creator for the last like five years, like since the pandemic, I've been a solo creator, which is it's the opposite for me, whereas I started off doing like partnered content and then started doing. So solo you're still content. doing content. I still shoot content. I'm actually planning to shoot my first feature film um, in 13 years later this year. A, a pornographic a, film. Yeah, a pornographic with film. a partner, with multiple partners, with the, multiple the, the partners. Movie, the movie is built around me. Um, as as an older woman, as a woman who's 50 years old and the character is 50 years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are not a lot of people with naturally gray hair in the it's business. It's beautiful. Thank yes. you. <laughs> um, and you're setting like the, like the road for me because I get called old every day. Oh, yeah. Like, what am I going to do when I get 40 and this when pussy cannot point. squirt no more? Yeah. Well, you, hello, you do we not see cinnamon okay, love? Since you brought it up, what are you planning to do? Because maybe at 40, yes, but-, but Does I'm, it still work? I, I don't know. Does it still I, work? Because if it still work, I'm working. Can, have, can I be science. honest with you? Yeah. I, I mean, this is a, a bit graphic for me. I don't really know what squirting is. Oh, that's, like, I've, squirting I've is, seen it, don't even but worry I don't about. know what it's, it is. It's, it's female ejaculation. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a compound that comes from the skein's gland. And so there's there's always this conversation. My producers are laughing at yeah. me off camera. That is the technical. That is the technical answer. That is the technical answer. That is the tech. It's whatever comes out of this. Yes. Okay. That, that's what it is. Yeah. But but women can get aroused without squirt. You like you yeah. can be wet, of and that's not squirting. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying if you have not squirted, you have not had an orgasm. Like you? No 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 no. no. Okay. I'm saying if if as long as my vagina is squirting, I'm going to be making content. Squirt. Oh, that's my niche. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I yeah, my bad. Okay, I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's my niche. <laughs> and people, that is a whole thing. Like yes. people look yeah. for squirters. Yes. Yes. Okay. I mean, it's you know, it's a valid question. You know, <laughs> thank as, you, thank as, you, as someone you know. Who is, you know, I've I started. We're in no judgment space. No everybody. judgment. No, we're not judging you. No judgment. But no, but but you know, for me, it's. You know, I definitely I started menopause very young. I started menopause really? at thirty-eight. Why? And you said who? The what eight? 38. At thirty-eight. At 38, menopause. I started menopause. Why? And I, I, know, I had ovarian cancer. Oh, I'm so sorry. I had ovarian cancer. And so, but I, um, I, so 
I started menopause early and that definitely shifted the way that I approach sex work. Mm. And, you know, even, you know, I mean, I was doing studio porn, but I prefer being an escort. Like I prefer seeing clients one-on-one there. It, I don't have to do all the camera work. I don't have to edit content. I don't have to do marketing. Because if you're there it's for much- five hours, it's not five hours of sex, correct? Right, exactly, right. exactly. So but it could be. Never for me, never that. Okay, right. <laughs> okay. That, that's never like that. a glamorized view of it. Yeah, like, okay. no, they're it's... not booking you for five hours for five hours of sex. No. They'll take you to dinner and okay. send you to the spa, and you'll come back and, and say goodbye. And, okay, and sometimes okay. it's a half hour. Sometimes yeah. it's an hour. Like and it's not. It's not the hotel room. And, okay. and you're and you go about your business, but it's like I I much I prefer that over doing porn because the it's a much it's a it's a different type of work that doesn't take as much labor. Um, but as I've gotten older, you know there are concerns that are directly related to menopause and the way that my body has changed that I have to think about. Like you know it's you know vaginal atrophy is a real thing. Like you know it's and with that comes what is vaginal atrophy? Vaginal atrophy is when the lining of the vulva thins. Um, and you know because of the lo- the loss of estrogen, and so a lot of women will report like vaginal dryness or tearing yeah. when, they, when they like are when they're having intercourse, and it and it can impact your 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 mental health. It can cause of you course. to have other you know it can cause you to decrease your arousal and desire you know because it could be painful. Mm-hmm. The, the uterus can shorten. Um, you know, like the canal can shorten. There's a lot of like genital uro- urinary symptoms that can happen with menopause that for me has really shifted the way I approach I, uh, approach sex work. Yeah. You know, it's like I do suffer from like, or I did suffer from chronic vaginal dryness. And it's like, there's a concern. Like am, if I get a tear, you know, is the condom gonna break? Am I going to- Do you use condoms in your scenes? Um, I didn't when I was doing scenes, but when I was seeing clients, I did use condoms. And you, do you use condoms in your scenes? And do they pay you more for not using condoms? Mind you, I've only done one professional scene. I do okay. everything by myself. So that, yeah, I don't. Just, yeah. Okay. And, but when I do work with partners, no, there is no condom because you're going to get tested. OK, so they and, do and test that's an industry for, standard. Yeah, yes. So I understand you have to test. I try to, to test. bring industry standards into my independent work. OK. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And is so because that's an industry standard, like how prevalent are STDs and sex? work oh, we, were, it's, we were just having yeah. this conversation it's, yeah. it's, it can, it's still it's still prevalent well in the mainstream industry there is testing for hiv gonorrhea chlamydia and syphilis um there's a whole lot of stds outside of that right but that is the those the are the main. thing those are okay. the main things that you want to catch you know, but can that, you ask them treat? test for everything? People, ha- well, you can, but it's not a part of like the standard, okay. right? So the standard panel are those things, and it's every two weeks. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so, and and the testing basically allows you to know whether or not your partner had an STI within the last two weeks, mm-hmm. okay. so that you can isolate, test, and treat people, you know, isolate and treat people Mm -hmm. um, and contact trace in the event that there's, you know, that there's a positive STI. Mm -hmm. And so, but there's, there is, there is a prevalence of STIs because you're still having sex. But you slide over here and the content creators like myself, where there is no agent telling me I have to go get tested every two weeks, Mm -hmm. nor am I going to be on a set Mm -hmm. every week or once a month or however. I can go choose to work with Cinnamon Love today Mm -hmm. and then choose to work with you tomorrow. Okay. Now I can get one test the day before these. Right. How does that affect you? Yeah, the tests are only as good. You see what I'm saying? The tests are only as good as the day your blood was drawn. Yes. So you can get your blood drawn today. And that's with any testing, right? Right. And and I should I should preface this by saying that the adult industry's testing standards are like are supreme. Yes. Public health officials come to the porn industry for advice yes. on how to test. Yeah. The, the I, test that we do for HIV is actually the secondary test that the general public usually gets as a confirmation test. Right, right. So it's like we're, because so we, and we, te- the, that test allows you to not only shorten the window of error, but also it, you know, but allow you to ke- to make sure that you're isolating those people. Have, yeah. have you ever contracted an STI from your work? I have. And how did you treat it, handle it? What was the... Um, at the time that I was active in the business, there was a clinic called AIM Healthcare that used to do all of our testing. Mm-hmm. And they also had 
like nurse practitioners on staff that would allow you know where you could like get your get treatment if mm-hmm. you ha- if you contract was it something. curable yeah okay yeah. so yeah. you were fine it cleared yeah. up you had to isolate you couldn't work yep. which impacted your income yep. i would imagine absolutely yeah absolutely um and be, you work mostly alone so i assume you have not yeah, Contract the only the STD or STI I've contracted was in like in the Navy when I was not doing porn. Yeah. Okay. And was it curable? Yeah, it was chlamydia. Okay. What, what? Chlamydia. Chlamydia. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I mean, but it's like with, with sex work, and I should say that even sex, sex, even content creators are getting tested. People will go to the clinic. Mm-hmm. They'll go to their doctor. Like you know, it, it may not be as regimen as the yeah. mainstream industry but people are aware that they're having sex and they need to get tested you know it's i i have more concerns about having sex with people who are not in the industry who are not sex workers who may not be tested at all mm-hmm. and i disagree i think i kind of feel like the content creators are the problem so even before i even touched a professional scene or set yes i knew the standards because mm-hmm. i made myself learn the standards right. But as you've seen, as we've held Twitter spaces together and Mm -hmm. we've been talking about this, those content creators who are independent. So these are people not back like me, Mm -hmm. independent, completely by their own, Mm -hmm. (laughs) completely by their own. Um, You don't have to go get tested, tested. There's nobody telling me, Brittany, I need to go get tested before Mm -hmm. I go have sex, whatever other content creator. It is on my goodwill that I show up and show you a test and their goodwill that they ask for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If nobody's doing that, right. nobody's doing that. Yeah. And we've, so, and we've had this conversation a lot about how the mainstream industry needs, it's now to, blended. needs to do outreach to content creators, independent creators, to make sure that people are aware of what the standards are. Because, you know, you have, if you have, a, now if you have a cell phone, you can work, you can work online. Yeah. Like, you know, you can get on OnlyFans if you have a cell phone. You don't have to be connected to any agent, any company, any And you any, can leave anybody. a browser set and, and go home and have sex with four content creators mm-hmm. that or, same night. Or have yeah. sex with your boyfriend. Yeah. yeah. And it, there's, there's, it's blended now. Yeah. Mainstream and what I, where I am and what I, where I stand is now blended. And that is the issue I feel when it comes to STDs mm-hmm. and STIs because Nobody told me gold standard test. Mm-hmm. Nobody told me that. I, I looked it up. Mm-hmm. How many people do we know that are looking? We mm-hmm. sit on these stages with yeah. these people all the time. And, yeah. and unfortunately, because a lot of people come into the industry from, you know, from school systems that don't teach sex education either. Mm-hmm. And when, when Brittany's talking about Twitter spaces, like every time they you know, their sex workers use Twitter spaces as a way of like, you know, connecting with each other, teaching each other how to make money online, talking about various different issues, as well as like just partying and bullshitting. Mm-hmm. But the, every time there is like an, a, an industry of like a production hold because of like an STI outbreak, then, you know, we'll wind up on a Twitter spaces talking to creators about not trying, o- to inform a, them. A, trying to inform them about not only about the production hold and why there is a production hold, but also just giving basic sex education. I don't well, know for how hours. many times for hours. I don't know yeah. how many times we've had to explain to people why douching is bad, yes. you know, or, or having to explain to people where to HSV go get treatment. HSV-1 can be on both areas. Um, it's both not areas. just on your... Yeah. It's you just, know, can I tell you something? This has nothing to do with sex work, but a doctor told me this and I never forgot it. So let me spread the gospel here today. <laughs> yeah, please. My, a doctor told me when I was really young and she said, um, we were talking about this safe sex practices. And she said, I want you to imagine that your entire genitalia and your mouth is covered with glitter. Mm-hmm. And your partner, his mouth and his genitalia are covered with glitter. The goal is to keep your glitter off his glitter. Mm-hmm. Now, will a condom help you do that? And it was like, no. Mm-hmm. So there were still STDs that you could get, even so, to, you know, even if you're HSV1, HPV, like all of these and things, genital people, warts and yeah, all these STIs. All these so too. I appreciate you making that point. Yeah. I, I asked this question um, really from your perspectives. I want to hear mm-hmm. from your perspectives. I'll start with you because I, I don't think that you've had um, as much experience with other yeah. partners. Um, have you ever felt degraded in this work? Have, like you were doing something you didn't want to do? Um, I have walked off sets before. Well, tell me about a time when you walked off set. I had a director who, a black director, who wanted me to hold a slice of watermelon 
while I for pictures with a white male partner. Mm -mm. And I refused. What is up with the racist mm -mm. BS I mean, in porn? Like that I mean, is so. It's, if to keep to keep mm -mm. it real with you, it's the it's who they're who who they're producing it for. Right. They're producing it for oh. cishet white men who have a particular idea of what is sexy or hot or with you know of like black and Latinx yeah. and Asian women. Yeah. Like that's what it that's what it is. It's not I don't for remember us. I don't remember the town. I I'll, I'll have to get this exact information. I'll put it in the comments. But th at one point the Republican National Convention was held in a city and I don't remember where it was, mm -hmm. but the porn sites in that area went up significantly. The sex work in that area oh, yeah. went up significantly. So Always. when you say things yeah. like that they want to be to hold some watermelon for these, yeah. you know, white men. Yeah. I, one it doesn't surprise me, it disgusts me that people are into that um it makes me sad that some people probably would you said no somebody said okay because i need yeah. the money it yeah. makes me um, think and the hypocrisy it makes me think know? immediately of mia khalifa and the yeah. hijab and the the yeah the, i mean the, and, during the I don't I, know. oh mia khalifa <laughs> is a um middle east i believe she's middle eastern mm -hmm. um and she is she a wore, major she is major porn star okay. as of right now, like she today. She's retired now. Yeah, okay. she's retired now, but she she dibbles and dabbles still on like the OnlyFans stuff. Okay. But less sex worky. Okay. More suggestive. Got it. Mm -hmm. Um, but she pref did a porn scene in a hijab. Mm-hmm. Mm. Which would obviously she got, she be she got death threats. Anti, yeah, I would imagine. Would yeah. be anti what the hijab stands for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So but That's just what like it makes me Islam. think of. Like Islam the, is very conservative. Right. right, and it makes me think of like how we were talking about the cop porn during George Floyd. Yeah. It's like, you know what's going to get people. It, porn has become performative as yeah. well. Well, okay, so we talk yeah. about porn becoming performative. Let me ask this. We, so when um, I, I used to host a, a show on uh, MSNBC and I did a whole segment on porn. Mm -hmm. So I did a lot of research on porn and uh, the psychology around it. Mm -hmm. So because the adult industry has gone so mainstream and imagine your curious mind with a smartphone at your hand at 12 years old, you can see whatever. Mm -hmm. So you're overly sexualized maybe at a premature mm -hmm. age. Young men, because of of this, uh, particularly 20 somethings, have um, started to consider sex as something you do to mm. a woman, yes. not mm -hmm. with a woman. Yep. And young men um, have started to just immediately engage in choking. They don't know if the woman is into that or not. Mm -hmm. This isn't a porn scene. This is somebody you're mm -hmm. with. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm mm -hmm. curious as to um, adult film content creators, what your thoughts are around that. You know, it's I, so I did some work with um, with Boston University. I did some to create some porn literacy curriculum for Boston, for Massachusetts 10th graders. That was really like it. We it wound up having to be like con, like um, um, consent based, mm -hmm. um, you know, sex education yeah, basically it. because the schools wouldn't wouldn't take the material around porn literacy but there is no porn literacy for young people there's nope. zero not only and and not just thinking about the what they're viewing but also what they're creating because parents give young people they buy them cell phones all the time and they're not monitoring what they're doing with the with the phone they're not having yeah. conversations with them about what they're doing with the phone and young people don't understand that if they are shooting themselves sending it on snapchat or you know filming themselves with their partners they are producing child ex Porn. child Porn. sexual exploitation yes. material and in different municipalities it's considered illegal it yes. is illegal it's yeah. all illegal yeah. it is all illegal yeah. any any minor under yes. who is anyone who is You're under right. the in age every of 18 yeah anyone under You're the right. age of 18 even if they are consensually working and not being actively trafficked yeah. it is automatically considered to be trafficking and it is child sexual exploitation material yeah. period i don't yeah. like the term porn because it's not porn. It's not, yeah. Yeah. It is, we need to create that separation. It, it right. has, we yeah. have to remember that, that we have to use that language so people can understand the difference between porn the two. Is consensual and and, right. and with you, you and cannot adults, consent right? With and minors. you cannot Child. consent if you're a, if you're a minor. But we don't have these kinds of conversations with young people. And there have been many cases of minors engaging consensually in sending or receiving or producing 
this type this material and being uh, and being arrested mm -hmm. you know there was a case in pittsburgh like back in 2010 where and also we see a lot of revenge porn that's happening yep. with young people because they you know there, there was a case in 2010 where this young girl um her boyfriend was like you know i'll take you back if you like give me head behind a school and two of his friends were hiding and videotaped her i remember and that. then sent and then uploaded it to facebook and they got a call from the fbi like yeah. they showed up at their door and so we have to have these kinds of conversations with young people about what about not only the reality of having sex with another person and yeah. what consent looks like but also the ramifications of like have of producing this media putting it on the internet and what that can do for your but even the kind of media we're producing to be honest with you because i feel like and when then, i've looked at heterosexual porn it seems very violent to me and it seems like it's not enjoyable professional porn or is, is that, that amateur? amateur because mm -hmm. i feel I like know. as you know an amateur well, it's not a set like i'm filming it okay. it's a regular yeah. so i it's just somebody hired, in their bed i hired him camera. to come film me and okay. cinnamon have sex like okay. that right. It's not browsers didn't do it, black.com. You know, it's, okay. it's me. But yeah. what if it's amateur porn on a professional site? Does that make it, you know, if it's on... They uh, probably bought... In, during the pandemic, uh, there were professional sites right. buying amateur porn, porn because I got offered a lot to do that yeah. uh, to bring traffic back over to, to those their, sites. To yeah, because pandemic people were paying more attention to the... My point is, is OnlyFans girls are, are more girls next door or mm -hmm. OnlyFans, the people that are doing porn off by themselves, like me. They're giving girl next door. Yeah. So we're not making content where you're just, there is no no foreplay. You're just ramming it in and you're choking. Like, yeah. You get to see the start to finish. Right. Yeah. That's more not the mm -hmm. professional porn. That that would be over here with me. Yeah. Um. So there, we're trying to, the point of us is to show you like, we're regular people. Right. And we're not just doing this dry ramming, choking, no consent and, talk. And, right. And you, and but you there have, is. And, and, but also with the mainstream porn too, you have to remember that editing is a real thing. Yes, right? because like, yeah. All right, so I want to pick up that point with you um, because on, on sites like Pornhub and YouTube, or not YouTube, but um, oh, two, two yeah, galore. Any two sites. Yeah, yeah right, two. all of yeah. those. It's like they're, these uh, pornographic scenes, they do not look enjoyable for the women. Um, they look, they're completely done for the men where it's like multiple men on one woman. Now, I'm not here to, to judge right. one. If she does enjoy it, no problem. Mm -hmm. But I do think there is something about perpetuating that type of... Um, sexual visual violence in terms of fantasy that should cause some concern i think that's the what problem is is that you the consumer don't know that it's not real right. and that's the problem had there and been a for or after part of the video that showed you hey we consensually sat down and did this because of xyz yeah no no but if it but the if fantasy it, of that if it showed after the video mm -hmm. i feel like more people would understand it there is well, none and and that and mm. that ha that okay. used that used to exist like like i know we do it like we, I, yeah, i've we, seen it done but they yeah. don't show don't, it as you much it. you mm -hmm. don't see it on tube sites because a lot of the tube sites are they're they're all user generated mm -hmm. right Pornhub now is you know you have to be a verified creator and upload your ID in or a studio always. in order to yeah. be on the platform yeah but other platforms it's other people who are taking like somebody a, a fan may take a scene that I did mm -hmm. and upload it to whatever website to, to Xtube or you know X videos and so when that happens they're editing out all of the rest of the scene the, like fluff. It's the what what they consider the fluff because yeah. they only want to show the the action I get and it. the come shot but but and the other thing that and i can kind of get where you're where you're what you're right, asking it's not the scene i understand that it's like a production i guess what i'm saying though it still to me promotes sexual violence yeah and, and, and that's because I, you don't understand that there is there's a, almost an hour of conversation of is this okay do but you I'm, like but this? i'm not talking you... about the people participating in right it. i'm talking about the, the viewers consumers. don't know that be, before right. that happened there was a long conversation right. on camera. Yeah. Right. Everything's recorded. Everything's yeah. When you walk on set, it, the recording starts. Yeah. We're having all these conversations. It, a lot of the people that you're watching that look like they have no, it looks, it looks not porn, but more graphically violent. Mm -hmm. They it's are still, yeah, they're still having it's these negotiated. very extensive conversations. Nobody is seeing those conversations right. though. Because, Nobody believes they exist. And, You're and just I, seeing somebody pot potentially getting hurt, yeah. not knowing that 
there is so much after nobody knows about aftercare boundaries talk checklist yep nobody knows about that all they yep. see is the fucking yeah. yeah and that's yeah and it's and i i think that it's it's important to remember that good sex or fun sex looks different for everybody yeah there are a lot of people who are into choking yeah. breath play is is is, 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 is something that people people like spanking people yeah. like handcuffs people like all kinds of different kinds of sexual play and so because it looks different for everybody we have to remember that sex workers are negotiating they they are negotiating their they're using their power to negotiate the type of sex they want to have right and so it's like and in most cases they're also negotiating who they're working with yeah so it's like if i'm if i'm going to shoot a scene or if britney's going to shoot a scene usually what happens is do you have a no list people who you don't want to work with do you who's on your yes list what kinds of scenes are you open to doing are you do you do blowjobs do you do do you do part you know scenes with anal. men scenes with women do yeah. you do anal or well, do when you you're do doing all that though like mm -hmm. um because i have uh, like read things when i was you know yeah. reading on, on porn mm -hmm. about men what it takes to get them erect you know because yeah. you've like done everything <laughs> and even outside mm -hmm. of like men just like some of the people who have orgasms on tap they got money they're famous they're wealthy and they mm -hmm. can have threesomes foursomes whenever yeah and it's like your your senses are you know dulled and so you have to keep taking it to the next level i wonder for you cinnamon because you've had more scenes with partners um it, during that time was sex still enjoyable for you yeah. and is sex still enjoyable for you now yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely and I, is there a difference in if you enjoying it on set when it's performative are you really enjoying it and is it better when you're not when there are no cameras around and it's just actual I mean, sex i mean uh, the best sex for, that I have is like with my partners. Mm -hmm. Like I'm currently, I'm single. I don't have, you know, I'm not seeing anyone in particular. I have a couple of comets in my life. People who come and go in and out of comets. my life. Comets. I like, <laughs> I have comets they, in my they, life. Comets in my life. <laughs> okay. they, they pass okay. through every couple of years. <laughs> yes. But, but for the most part, I don't have, I don't have, um, you know, actively have partners. Um, but the best sex to me is the, is the sex that I have with people who I know very well, who yep. I have intimacy with. Um, but I also, when I was actively performing in the business, I loved what I was doing. I mean, who who wouldn't? It's like to be able to have amazing sex with good looking people, mm -hmm. to have like, you know, to have, to get paid to have an orgasm. Like what is not to love about it, the work, mm -hmm. you know? And and also to be able to work a, a couple of days a month. Like yeah. it's even when I was- I, You say that, I have it, to be honest with you, I would not love that work, yeah. you know? So uh, I think there yeah. are a lot of people who who wouldn't <laughs> yeah. like it. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm, I, 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 yeah, I know, I, 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 I get it for like, me. What, what for it was, wouldn't. I think yeah. there are probably for, a lot of people. For and me, it was really, I had the time Are you conditioned life. to feel like that though? Like you need yeah. to work? No, I, I don't think. Um, like have I, you had an opportunity to not like to? Well, I think um, maybe you said this earlier, I can't remember, but I don't, I have a challenge separating sex from love and intimacy. Oh, so you're talking about, I mean, you would not not like working as a whole. You mean you wouldn't be able to do sex work. Right. right that's oh, separate sex. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, like, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, thought yeah, you yeah. meant like yeah, yeah. who wouldn't like not working. And I'm like, uh, that's crazy. Yeah, what do you no, mean? No, 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 no. I don't mean that. But I, no, I, I get it. I get it. Okay, I'm there. I'm back. I get it. I get it. Yeah. No, I, I, and then I, can I, I ask yeah, you too, because you're both moms. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, like, your kids are old enough now mm -hmm. where they can Google you and see your work. My kids are in there. My, my kids are 26, 31, and 32. Do, has they, have they ever said, you know, how, how do they feel about it? What, what, what my oldest say? daughter is not crazy about, about my career. Mm -hmm. Um, but my other, my, other kids have they've all grown up under my, you know while I was working yeah. my youngest we still live together like they have we have the most um um they they I think they were exposed most to my life while I was working because I was traveling a lot um you know they were born while I was in the business mm -hmm. and so you know but it's um I think it's it's made it a lot easier to have certain types of conversations. So like when my youngest was 13, they came out as bi. Mm. And you know, and today and non-binary cuz you're saying and, they and, and non-bi okay. and they came out as non-binary as an adult, but the the conversations we're able to have because of my work has it it allows us to be more open and free because I'm I'm not there I'm not judgmental about mm -hmm. you know their whatever there is that they're yeah. thinking about. And and your child is two young to know okay and yeah. do you care if oh no i care yeah um i think the only thing i can do because i can't 
like, oh, I'm going to tell him X, Y, and Z, and it's going to be handled like this. No, I just put him in therapy yeah. and hope that he has the tools for that conversation yeah. when it comes. Yeah. yeah. The only the thing I did was I gave my kids age appropriate information yeah. mm-hmm. as they got older. So when yeah, they, right now mine think mine just thinks I'm famous because people ask me for pictures. So he's like, oh, yeah. she's famous because she's on YouTube. Wow. Yeah. So I just mm-hmm. is, is is there a dark side to Porn. Absolutely. It, we would be lying if we said there yeah. wasn't. Yeah. Like, have you experienced the dark side? Fortunately, no, but I have by proxy. So I am large enough on Twitter that people come to me mm-hmm. with the problems, problems in the industry. So I'm constantly mm-hmm. sharing mm-hmm. the problems and being yeah. the uh, essential like sheep to take the brunt. Yeah. yeah. And because you're um, still very young, I oh, do thank you. wonder. <laughs> well, yes, but listen, I, the older you get, the younger you get. I get called old gets, every you know, day. You are not Every old day they'll be like, that girl is old. Not at all. When is she going to stop? No, mm-hmm. not at all. Um, but I do wonder, you're, you're pursuing your degree in psychology, I yeah, think we said, yeah. Not, not to have, t- like, not to have talking points and not because I'm trying to make myself sound better just yeah. to have a degree. Like, I don't plan on using it. Just because you want to. It. Yeah. Um, but I do wonder, what does retirement look like for you? Like, second. What does retirement look like for you? I am your retired. Financial? You're retired now, so you're not working. And you, you are comfortable. You could live the rest of your life never working again. No, I am. I consider myself retired right now. But I'm saying financially, you're comfortable enough where yeah. you don't have to work again for the next 70 years or 60 Not years. 70, but I mean, I'm I'm I, I'm fortunate because the military is still paying me. That's true. That you retirement. Have been a, yes, yeah. that's yeah. true. I'm so you have those benefits. Veteran. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. So that is so there. Yeah. But Miss Be Nasty is here. But I feel retired. I don't I don't feel like I do feel like dealing with the fans is work. Yeah, that mm-hmm. is the work part yeah. of this aspect. But what I do is not work to me because I was already going to have these orgasms, mm-hmm. right. regardless if this camera's here or not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't feel like work to yeah. me. Yeah. It feels more like work when I have to bring in other people. Right. Okay. Because yep. then I I have to be on and on go for this camera. But when it's just me at home, I'm working when I want to. Mm-hmm. It's going to be whatever's in my mood, um, at my time. Yep. And you're going to get it. You know, it's, I'm, I'm the it's, same way. Uh, yeah. It's interesting how the industry has changed because we talked about you and you mm-hmm. said, you know, I've been on VHS, mm-hmm. I've been on mm-hmm. uh, DVD, DVD Blu-ray, all of it, all of and it. now the internet. Um, and for you, you know, this new in the industry as it's changing now, AI generated sex. And oh, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I just find it so like, where will this go? I like, am against that. That yeah. I am against. Why? And I think this, I understand why the sex workers are doing it because it is uh, new. It's another avenue mm-hmm. of income yeah and they're not having to do the work however i just think it's that we're helping facilitate our phase out yeah mm-hmm. they're not going Absolutely. to need a miss be nasty or cinnamon yeah. love pretty yeah. soon yeah they because can take your the life. ai version is going to be able to do yeah. everything that i cannot on days even say i take a week off because it's my menstrual cycle yeah, yeah i can do that yep AI ain't gonna need to do that. That's yeah. so true. AI ain't gonna yeah. need to have to do an enema. AI ain't gonna have to watch what she eat. That's right. The day before a scene. That's right. Nothing. Yeah. I think about AI. I have mixed feelings about AI because you know when we think about the 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 you know intellectual property. Mm-hmm. You know we were, we're just we're seeing your just name this, and likeness. Your and name you just and talked likeness about and, how and personality can, traits. Yeah. Also, because yeah. it mimics all traits. your videos. So yeah. I, I have concerns about things like and that. And becoming but, generative. But I also think about like. You know, when we started this conversation, you were asking about people and who started in the 80s and 90s. Mm-hmm. And like I was saying at the top of the call, like, I mean, of the conversation, how you have, you know, people like that who didn't have residuals and were paid significantly less money. Like Vanessa Del Rio has said in many, many interviews that she got paid. She was getting paid 150 a scene. Like $100? $150 in the 70s. Wow. And those scenes can still be found online. Like she Khalifa. has her. She, she was, but what, a thousand, eleven hundred yeah. for gangbangs? Yeah, she has. It's crazy. Uh, you know, but, but specifically, like when I think about the, the when I think about the, the real elders, right? Yeah. Right. And so it's like, you know, someone like that now has the ability to, one, go on OnlyFans. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. And, and make residual income. And they can they can like license their likeness for AI to continue to earn money in a way that they couldn't have before. Someone could easily be having sex. They could be producing new content as their self from the 70s. Well, let me, like, let me, because you, you brought up um, Vanessa Del Rio and I just remember her. I know who she was because she was talking about in rap music. Yeah, <laughs> um, she's but an icon. I, yeah. But I want to talk about like, 
shift us a little bit to what the streets out there talking about because yeah. celebrities have now started to join OnlyFans. Yeah. Um, Cardi B, um, I think was on OnlyFans. Yes, Beyonce OnlyFans. rapped about OnlyFans with oh, Meg The yep. Stallion. You know, um, Monique just, was on OnlyFans. Doing, Monique, the comedian. She did. Um, she had. Uh, she she moved all of her like food and workout content to OnlyFans. Um, Lunell launched a, a launched a not safe for work only fans wow also. Yeah. does that but do you feel like that when celebrities do that are they taking away from i guess le legitimate sex work I felt you know both i felt two ways like in the beginning it was like yes you're putting only fans on and this helped me yeah yeah but then it was like okay this helped me and then a couple years later now all your little kid fan bases who turned 18, mm -hmm. now they're joining OnlyFans the because right. they think the it's Disney the cool. Performers. Yeah, they think it's cool because Cardi B has one or so-and-so yeah. has one, Bella Thorne has the, the one. one the, the, so the, now the, I'm gonna turn 18 and have one. The oh, woman wow. who was on the Catch Me Outside Girl. Did yeah, yeah. yeah. the cat. day she turned 18, yeah. she made two, five million, whatever the crap. Wow. That, that's the, people the who issue. were waiting for you. That's great. Yeah. The, that, the, the, issue that, the issue that I have, the issue that right I now. have with the celebrities who do OnlyFans, it's not that it's taking away from from the the, the sex workers. The, the issue is that they're not putting any money into sex work. So they're not donating money to sex worker led organizations that are providing advocacy. How and many resources. people are doing that? Like do none of them. I could probably no, but name. I mean outside of celebrities, how many sex workers? Oh, are, there oh. are a lot of people. There oh are, yeah, are, are, I, are, I, I, it's yeah. a community. Oh, we be moving. There's, okay. Yeah, and 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 it's been happening for a long time. The reason we have the word sex work is because Car the, the late Carol Lee mm -hmm. coined the phrase in the 1970s. Mm. She was a sex worker advocate back then who was doing unionizing work. And I was going to ask about that because you see a lot of strippers across the country now I'm and I completely to, yeah. support organizing. Mm -hmm. I think there should yeah. be a collective bargaining agreement yep. in, in sex work. Um, and the, women drive the industry. Yep. And so even some of this like racist content that people put out there, yeah. I that could be something to consider if you guys are up there, for it. Well, like, unfortunately, there is, there while we might turn our nose up at it, there are going to be other black women that want to make that yeah. Yeah, kind of and content. We'll and it. we can't, it's yeah. supposed to be an autonomy. You're supposed to be able to do what you want to do with yeah. your body without me saying you can't that do you that can't because do it, if they it makes do me that, feel some You know way. who they should them. get to do that? She on OnlyFans. Rachel freaking Dolezal. Yeah. <laughs> this woman is on OnlyFans. If you yeah. want a black fetish, she got a black fetish. Have yeah. her hold the watermelon and do whatever. Yeah, That's how so I something. feel. Um, yeah, I mean, there there is a porn union that <laughs> doesn't really do a lot of stuff. I mean, they I don't know what they do, There's but there is, there is a porn union. But the thing is that it's hard to to how do you unionize independent contractors? Right. Right. We don't. It's it's different. You know, content creators are not strippers. Strippers work for, for a yeah. You know, a it's, business. it's a difference. I get it. The rest of us are working for ourselves. It would be different We're if OnlyFans backed us up, but they don't even recognize us on yeah. the platform. So and y'all y'all are the bread and know. butter. Yeah, you know, we know. We know we are. Yeah. I mean, the, the economics of this is just all very interesting. I Listen, I can sit here and talk to you guys for eight more hours. Yeah. My producers are off camera like, wrap it up. So, um, yeah. so we have to leave it there. But I, I have found this conversation so fascinating. I mean, both of you guys are, um, you give lend intellectual thought, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times the people who are watching you, who are viewing you, they just see you as these like, flat structures that are not multi-dimensional yeah. um and it's like these are human beings with thoughts yeah. and uh yeah. smarts you know like yeah. intelligence around the business and so i respect um you all showing up to have the conversation yeah. and i just personally think we should um we should legitimize um sex work in the sense that it creates more safety um for women in the yeah. industry um and more regulation in mm -hmm. in terms of of health but also stigmatized and yes. not have you know judgment uh mm -hmm. like i said i'm not here to glorify or, or promote or to yeah. disrespect or disregard or, or any yeah. of it but i i do think that it is um work and if it's your chosen profession you deserve a right to a uh, happy life and safety mm -hmm. and all of those things and so for all of you all who may be interested in following these ladies i imagine it may be some of you out there um let's ask Miss Be Nasty, aka Brittany, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me at MissBeNasty.com. Um, I'm mostly Miss Be Nasty everywhere, but yeah. Okay.
I have Googled you. And oh my God. She is Miss Be Nasty everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to Google. Does I know what comes up on Google. That's crazy. <laughs> yes. And Miss Cinnamon Love. Yeah. Um, people can find me at singleinbrooklyn.com. They can also find me at um, bipoc-collective.org if they want to donate some money to help us continue offering services for you know black and brown sex workers. Appreciate yes. it. And yes, please help the BIPOC collective. Yes. Yeah. I send everybody there. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So I had a lot of questions. I still have a lot of questions, but a, a lot less questions yes. that you all were polite enough um, to join me in this conversation. And however you may feel about this, um, I would just ask that you all be respectful um, and honor the humanity of these two women who were uh, bold and transparent enough to share uh what this industry um is and is like and, and working in it and i have been better informed because of the conversation and i hope you guys have as well so please do join us next time for the next episode of across generations and we'll see you on the other side